Okay, welcome everyone to this particular presentation. My name is Vey, you're watching AI Evolved, and the purpose of this presentation is to simplify photographic prompting when it comes to Midjourney version 6. So we've got a lot to get through today. These are all the sections to get through. Um, but before we do, I just want to, you know, outline how this stream is going to go. So first, I'm going to, of course, go through the sections as per normal. But at the end of the stream, we are going to be taking questions. So any questions that you guys may have, feel free to ask them in the live chat right now. And then I'll get to addressing those questions at the end. Also, to those of you already in my email list, I'll be emailing you the PDF after this presentation has ended. And for those of you new who are tuning in, hello, I will be posting a link, um, a link down below as a post comment for you to then, of course, get the guide and join the email list as well. The process. So here's what we're going to get. Um, uh, here's what we're going to cover in this particular live stream. So first, starting off with learning photography essentials of focal. Then we're going to be covering the difference between digital versus analog photography, then mid journey version six settings, then photography principles applied across 10 different styles, portrait styles they are, and then some resources as well as some closing words from myself and Q and A. So let's get into the first part then. Oh, by the way, guys, if you can't see or you're having any difficulty, feel free to, you know, post in the chat right now. And then, uh, yeah, I'll be able to address that. But yeah, otherwise I'll continue. So yeah, the first thing is F, which is frame and composition. So for frame and composition, it consists of the overall image. So what you're seeing there, that would consist of the whole frame or the whole image. And it's made up of several different visual elements as part of it. So good composition guides the viewers eye to the most important parts of the frame and can dramatically affect the image's mood and narrative. Key composition techniques include the rule of thirds, leading lines, framing and balance. So I'll get into the composition technique shortly. But before I do, I'm going to read out the prompt. So a portrait of a person framed symmetrically with a blurred natural background. Include natural light to emphasize depth and focus with balanced negative space around the subject. So let's get into this then. So composition techniques. So rule of thirds, the best way to kind of explain that is to look at this particular grid here. So this is a two by two grid and this is very commonly used in photography. So these um, yellow dots, they basically signify uh, focal points. So the specific area of focus of the image or of the subject that's that we're taking a picture of. And usually they occupy, they are occupied at the same time. So you usually see that the subject occupies two of them at the same time. And the rule of thirds essentially is ensuring that to the right of them, to the right of these two dots or to the left of these two dots, a subject is placed. So case in point with a prompt I did earlier. So this old lady here, you can imagine that the vertical line of the right is going central to her where our eyes are there. And then there would be another one there, another vertical line to the left of her. So she's offset a little bit on the right of that particular vertical line. And that's basically utilizing the rule of thirds particular composition technique there. Then we get leading lines. So leading lines, you can imagine like this is a train track right now. And this is an excellent example of leading lines, but you're basically using what's already in nature and the, there's lines already there and they lead to the main focal point of the image which is the subject right the area of focus of the image is the subject there and the train tracks lead another example is this dog image here with this bridge and it's leading naturally to this specific subject of the dog there so that's another composition technique that you can use in mid journey earlier i tried to recreate that with doing this image here so you see these bridge railings they lead into the dog and then the pavement as well of the bridge leading to the dog as well. So that's an example there of, you know, leading lines. And then framing is quite an interesting one. So framing to best illustrate that is basically a frame within a frame. So if we think of this like trees here or yeah, it's it's forming like a, I guess like a circle in a way, right? And that's like a frame in a way. And then within that, you get like this 
majestic image of this castle there, castle-like structure. So that's a frame within a, f a frame. A more simple example is this. So when you do that, you know, you get a frame within a frame. So within this rectangle here would be my eyes and that would be a frame within a frame. So that's illustrated there, that boat within that person who's made like an artificial frame with these particular hands. So that would be framing and then we get onto balance. So balance is different to that of symmetry. So balance is related to but distinct from symmetry. A balanced image doesn't necessarily look the same right to left or side to side. Rather, the various quadrants of the image complement each other in aesthetically pleasing ways. So here is a perfect illustration of balance in action. So this isn't necessarily symmetrical left to right, the background that is, but the subject is perfectly symmetrical, right? They're right in the frame. We can see them, they're right in the center. And then if we go back to this, her forehead is around here and her hair as well. And then she's like perfectly proportioned there within the middle of the grid here. So that's a perfect symmetrical example. And then the particular background has something called negative space. Now, negative space, an example of that would be like empty space, essentially like space that is empty is negative space. It's a photographic term. I don't know why they don't just use empty space. It would be a lot easier, but that's negative space. And now when we say it's balanced, it's not exactly symmetrical, but it still somehow draws our attention as the viewer of the image to the specific focal point. In this case, the subject being perfectly positioned in the center of the frame there. Okay, so that's balance. Now the prompt formula for this is a type of image. So a portrait of a person. So a subject, man, woman, child, dog, animal, whatever you want it to be. By the frame composition technique used. So with the, uh, yeah, by the frame composition technique used with a background, so blurred background here, include type of lighting. I'll be getting into the types of lighting later on. This is an illustration of natural lighting, of course, because there's like sun above her there. To emphasize depth and focus with balanced negative space around the subject, okay? Now we get into lighting there. Hopefully you understand frame and composition there. Now we get into lighting, so this is a portrait of a young woman in a forest during golden hour. Golden hour is basically, you know, when the sun rises or it sets, you get this perfect golden hue. And hue is a word for color within photography that showcases warm, natural light enveloping her face, creating a soft, ethereal mood. So understanding light's role is crucial in photography. Lighting affects the mood, texture, and color of the image. Different types of lighting, natural, artificial, hard, soft, and techniques, backlighting, side lighting, fill lighting, which I'll get into all of the techniques as well as types later on with some prompt examples to so stick around for that, can dramatically alter the photographs' fill and the subject's appearance. So here's the prompt formula for that. A type of image of an age subject. So you can say young woman, you can say old woman, or you can be very uh, specific in mid journey. It does well with ages, so like young 20s, late 30s, etc. And it'll be you'll be able to you know discern the difference between those two age ranges used. So type of image between age subject in a setting. So setting forest during time of day. So golden hour that showcases type of lighting, warm, natural light, and then how it affects the scene or the subject enveloping her face, creating a soft ethereal mood, creating a mood description there. So that's the prompt formula there. Now we get into lighting types. So prompt and use cases. So this is an example of artificial light here. So I'm going to go on a quick deviation here. Um, but yeah, if we zoom in, we can see, you know, he's got left um, like a light on his glasses. He's got like a big light coming in from the left. And then the same thing here with like some kind of, I guess, pinkish light there. I don't know that color as such, but from the right and then behind him, he's got a yellow light here. So I've got this big light here, which is called a key light. And then I've got this light here, which is called a fill light. And then behind me, I've got like an ambient artificial light there, which is the blue light behind me. And that creates a great deal of like depth when you're watching a video or you're watching like a creator. Okay. So it's really effective for illustrating that point. So yeah, I'm going to get into now the next type, which is hard lighting. So hard lighting is great for accentuating certain facial features. 
So this is a particular prompt for that. A close-up portrait of a man with hard lighting from a single source creating sharp shadows on his face that highlights texture and adds intensity to his expression. So hard, light, hard lighting creates sharp shadows and strong contrasts, accentuating textures and shapes of dramatic, attention-grabbing images. It's great for highlighting details and enhancing mood in photography. So that's great. And now we get onto soft lighting here. So this is a portrait of a woman by a large window on an overcast day with soft light diffusing. Diffusing basically means spreading evenly. So spreading evenly across her face, minimizing shadows and revealing subtle details. So soft lighting spreads softly across the scene, reducing shadows and creating a flattering uniform light. It's perfect for portraits and creating a gentle atmosphere, giving a natural calming effect. Okay, so we can see that you know, to the left of her face there, it's not that much of a shadow because it's more like spread evenly across her face. And then you can imagine actually, if you're using like generative fill, for instance, that we'd have like a lake in the background and you could have some like palm trees and some sunshine there. And it would really like match exactly what the subject's looking like in that particular image. So that's an example there of soft lighting. Now we get into backlighting. So backlighting is quite interesting in that it creates a silhouette of the subject and it creates an element of mystery and intrigue to the particular image that you're looking at. So a silhouette of a person standing against the setting sun with backlighting creating a silhouette effect. Light is outlining their figure, creating a halo effect. So backlighting illuminates the subject from behind, creating a glowing outline or halo effect. It's great for highlighting edges, separating the subject from the background and adding depth to the photos there. So these are all mid journey prompts, of course, that I've done. And yeah, the sun is looking quite strange there. But I think if we zoom in, you can really see the fidelity of the image and how excellent it really is. And um, yeah, backlighting as well. It only has a light source from one particular direction. So either to the front of them or to the back of them. And that's what creates that particular effect of where you can't see or not, not much detail is revealed, if at all, about the subject of wh where we're looking in the direction of. So that's backlighting. Now we get into lighting techniques of side lighting. So side lighting is different to that of hard lighting in that it's more directional. So hard lighting, if we go above here, was just like if we zoom into his particular eyes, we can see that he, he's got like a window there, right? That's coming onto one side of his face but it could be from that direction as well from the top coming in right above for instance so it's not specifically specified it's not specifically restricted to a certain direction where it'd be coming in whereas here it is it comes in either from the right or from the left right hence why it's side lighting there so this is the prompt for that a portrait of an artist in their studio with side lighting illuminating one side of their face creating dramatic contrast between light and shadow, enhancing their facial features. So side lighting shines on the subject from the side, casting shadows and highlighting textures. It's ideal for revealing detail, creating contrast and adding dimension to images. Right, so I think it's done a really brilliant job there. Having that side light come in, because you can see behind him is almost completely dark. So it's really, really good. Good contrast there. Now we get onto fill lighting. So as I was saying earlier, this is a key light. So this is a main light that's lighting up the whole room. If I do that, you'll see, you know, it's completely gone dark on me. But then if I do that again, of course, everything's lit up. And then fill lighting, if you have that lit up, but you don't have this lit up, you'll just see that one side of my face is lit up and this side has shadow on it. So in order to fill that, we have a fill light. So when I turn that on, it's much more and I like turn it up for instance you'll see that it's lighting this side of my face as well as the whole room up as well so I have it on the lowest setting so that's fill lighting okay so to illustrate this is the prompt for that so an indoor portrait of a beautiful Russian woman with full lips and red lipstick use fill lighting to soften shadows on the face caused by natural light coming in from the window resulting in a balanced evenly lit image and fill lighting doesn't have to be artificial you know these lights that i've got in the room right now they're artificial this is natural light so if we zoom into her particular eyes we can see i mean i can see anyway that there's a window pane right there 
and then there's two windows there. So we can see the light and the direction from which the light is coming in from those windows, they're lighting up both sides of her face there. So that's fill lighting. Okay, so fill light and soften shadows by adding light to darker areas, balancing the overall light. It's perfect for reducing harsh contrast and bringing out details in the shadows. Now we get into C, which is camera angles and perspective. So this is the prompt, a portrait of a confident businesswoman taken at eye level to convey direct engagement, capturing a moment of eye contact that suggests confidence and approachability. So this is the angle and height from which a photo is taken and it can significantly influence the perception of the subject. Experiment in various angles, eye level, high, low, and perspectives can add depth or convey power, vulnerability, or intimacy. So I spoke about this in my cinematic videos, the tilt of the camera, the camera angle as such. So when you're pointing up, then that would be like a low angle camera because the subject's like looking quite menacing. This is eye level, so it's like lateral, you know, with how you and I view the world. And then like high angle would be the opposite. So it'd make the subject feel really small, right? Or it would like convey vulnerability. So I'll get to that shortly, the differences between all of those. So the prompt formula then is a type of image of a subject demeanor. So a portrait of a confident businesswoman or just like describing the subject really taken at camera angle. So eye level to convey mood, direct engagement or like stance or basically how the subject is presented. Capturing a moment of eye contact that suggests desired feeling, so confidence and approachability. Okay, so that is camera angles and perspective, and that's an example there of eye level. Now we get into high angle. So as I was saying earlier, this makes the subject look much more like inferior. So a portrait of a young woman standing while looking up, shot from a high angle, making the viewer feel a sense of protection and tenderness towards the subject, emphasizing vulnerability. High angle looks down on the subject, making them appear smaller or more vulnerable. It's effective for conveying a sense of inferiority or for giving a comprehensive overview of the scene. So if it was a little bit more back the camera, then you know we could see more of the vastness and it would still achieve the same objective of making the subject in the particular image feel like inferior or vulnerable, for instance. By the way, for those of you tuning in now, I will be taking questions at the end. So feel free to leave your questions in the live chat and I'll be taking care of those at the end of the stream. So let's get on this. So this is low angle then. So a portrait of an athlete standing tall, viewed from a low angle, highlighting their strength and dominance, the perspective amplifying their stature and sense of empowerment. A low angle looks up at the subject, making them appear larger or more dominant. It's used to convey power, strength, or to elevate the importance of the subject. So if we zoom in, it looks really intimidating, right? And he's even got the toes as well to go away and to go along with it. So that's good. So that's an example there of low angle. Now we get into A, which is aesthetic styles as part of focal. So this encompasses the photographer's or creator's visual style or mid journeyers style and the mood they wish to convey. Whether it's the timeless elegance of a classic portrait or the edgy dynamism of street photography, understanding the elements that contribute to different aesthetic styles such as colour schemes, textures and thematic elements is key. So this is the prompt for that. An elegant portrait of an individual wearing vintage attire captured in a timeless setting with soft warm lighting and a muted colour palette to evoke a sense of nostalgia and classic beauty. So I called it timeless elegance there, and that's an example of a classic portrait. So the prompt formula for this was a type of image, so elegant portrait. I put the word elegant in the start or the end, you can do that. And, you know, it definitely matches the feel that you're going for. It does really well with adjectives like that. So an elegant portrait of an individual wearing, so of a subject, so a man, woman, child, dog, etc. as I alluded to before. Wearing vintage attire, so vintage attire as well. You can explain the type of attire that she's wearing with adjectives. It works really well, that I found. Captured in a description of setting, so captured in a timeless setting, so like a traditional setting or timeless setting. They work one in the same really well. And a color palette, so a muted color palette um, with a soft, warm lighting and a muted color palette. So lighting type and description and color palette to evoke desired feeling generated. So to evoke a sense of nostalgia and classic beauty. So I did a really good job there. If we zoom in so you guys can see. Her eyes are a little bit off, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, it's hit and miss right now with version six. Hopefully by version seven, things will be substantially improved. 
but for now at least we can get the kind of aesthetic style that we dream of um, so it's much improved from version 5 that's for sure that's for sure now we get onto street photography so this prompt is a street portrait of a young urban artist with a graffiti background include vibrant colors and high contrast lighting showcasing the energy and rawness of the city now i don't know about energy of the city because there's no like people behind him you know and there's not a lot going on but definitely the rawness you know if we zoom in here you can see the graffiti in detail here like with the brickwork etc it's done a really really good job and I promise this isn't as pixelated as it is if you download the guide, which I'll send to you guys later on. But um, yeah, it's, it's still nonetheless done a really good job there. So the prompt formula for this then is a style type of image. So a street portrait of an age uh, subject. So a young urban artist with a background description. So with a graffiti background, include color description. So include vibrant colors and higher contrast lighting of light and type that showcases desired mood of the city, showcasing the energy and rawness of the city there. So bonus tips for this, you wanna focus on details. So using graffiti, textures and urban decay can capture the essence of a street super well. And you wanna seek contrast as well. So contrast old with new, rich and poor or other opposing elements to tell a more compelling story, okay? Now, surreal fantasy. So the prompt for this is a surreal portrait set in a dreamlike landscape featuring ethereal lighting and saturated pastels with the subjects levitating among fantastical elements. Blend fantasy with reality to create captivating visual narrative. And the prompt formula for this is a style slash type of image, so a surreal portrait, set in a landscape description, so dreamlike landscape, featuring light and description slash color palette, so featuring uh, ethereal lighting and saturated pastels, with the subject doing action, so with the subject levitating, among fantastic uh, fictional elements there so fantastical elements blend fantasy with the reality to create a captivating visual narrative that last sentence there is just making sure that it definitely gets what i'm going for so i got a little bit of inspiration for this image from harry potter and then i tried to combine it a little bit with um inception you know where you get the floating like buildings so that's a great scene there inception building scene where you can see that is an example there of like surreal fantasy to some extent because these guys standing on top of a real building but then when we look up it's like inverted and it's clearly like fake right it's clearly fantastical so that's a great example there of like surreal fantasy by the way you you might want to go to like film grab it's a really good site for coming up with you know visual ideas and you could even go like into category as well and look at the genre and then go into like sci-fi for instance or something like that and basically take a pick so if we went like harry potter we would get ideas for like coming up with scenes and then you can use the describe feature in mid journey as well to help you even describe the setting if you want to i've got a video for that on my other live stream i using i think it was called award-winning images with slash describe in mid journey so you may want to check that out and then you can recreate your favorite styles from your favorite films there Okay, hope that helps. So now, yeah, bonus tips for this is blending ordinary with extraordinary. So mix everyday scenes with bizarre elements like a city with floating buildings or whispering trees and use symbols. Incorporate symbols like a happiness counting clock or a desire reflecting mirror to deepen the narrative and engage the imagination within your fantasy prompts. Now we get into modern minimalism. A modern minimalist portrait with a focus on simplicity with a neutral color scheme. Include natural light to create a serene contemporary vibe. The subject's subtle expression is against the plain uncluttered background, emphasizing form and space. And the prompt formula is a style type of image, so a modern minimalist portrait with a focus on simplicity with a color scheme or neutral color scheme. In include light description, so natural light to create a serene um, which is like calm to create a serene contemporary vibe calm traditional vibe if you can think of it or try calm, calm modern vibe contemporary vibe um, the subject's expression so the subject's subtle expression is against the background details so uh, plain uncluttered background emphasizing form and space okay so that's what i did to get that image and um yeah i will of course i'll be answering questions at the end for those of you tuning in so feel free to, you know, post them in the live chat and I'll be addressing everything at the end. 
there so bonus tips for this so you want to aim for highlighting simplicity like a lone chair in an empty room with natural light and then you want to highlight design design is really important in this so focus on details that showcase sleek designs such as a geometric building under a clear sky to reflect minimalism now we get into gritty noir so this prompt is a noir inspired portrait in black and white with dramatic side lighting casting deep shadows to highlight mystery and tension the subject is captured in the thoughtful pose reminiscent of classic film noir aesthetics and the prompt formula is a style type of image so a noir inspired portrait in color scheme so black and white with dramatic side lighting so i went over the different lighting types and techniques earlier in this presentation for those of you who are wondering you know what a side lighting etc so yeah you can go back to the presentation and that'll be available a lighting type direction casting shadow descriptions so casting deep shadows to highlight mystery and tension desired emotion the subject is captured in a pose description so in a thoughtful pose reminiscent of classic film noir aesthetics it's a style reference there so bonus tips for this then are contrast and shadows so you use prompts that emphasize stark light contrast and deep shadows like a dimly lit alleyway under a street light and mystery and mood focus on prompts that convey a sense of mystery and mood such as a detective silhouette in a smoke filled room okay now we get into the last part of focal which is lens focus and depth of field so this is the prompt for that a close-up portrait of a person with focus on their eyes in the background is a soft blur of an autumn forest highlighting the subject with intimacy so this is an example of shallow depth of field i can also do another example here in front of you so if i do this my hand should be in focus but then the background should be blurred ideally right and that would be that would be a shallow depth of field uh, we can see it here as well with the actual mid journey image itself we can see that behind her is very much like um blurred but then her eyes are very much in focus as well so that shallow depth of field so lens focus lens focus is where you just like focus on a specific image er area of the image but depth of field is like how is the relationship of blurriness from the foreground to the background okay so that's depth of field so lens focus sharpens a specific part of the image while depth of field dictates the extent of sharpness from front to back manipulating focus and depth of field can isolate subjects create dreamy backgrounds in portraits or achieve crisp clarity in street scenes which i'll get to shortly so the prompt formula for this is a shot type of a subject so close-up portrait um but by the way let me get into shot types i didn't quite go into that so shot types you get um all of these different shot types here i covered it in a cinematic video actually as well so these are angles yeah shot type this is a great one to illustrate so full shot is like the full body and then medium full shots like three quarters of the hip or knee up and then cowboy shot is like yeah about that level up and then medium shot hip up etc and it keeps going up and up and obviously zooming into the face as well so hopefully you get the idea of what that looks like if we go here then you'll see like extreme long shot quite a lot captured very long shot a little bit and then as we move up the shots so they got code names for them as well like ms mcu so medium close up close up extreme close up just the eye there uh, big close-up so extreme close-up is what that example was of so this is like an extreme close-up shot shot which is just the eye so that's what that is so a shot type close-up portrait or extreme close-up portrait in that case it did more of a um, extreme close-up but i put close-up so maybe it can be hit and miss sometimes but yeah, you just have to keep experimenting like i said this guy it only gets like 70 to 80 percent consistency so don't expect 90 to 100 percent consistency but I hope in any case that this helps with making your prompts better. So a shot type of a subject with focus on their facial feature. So just her eye in the background is a blur type. So shallow or deep with a focus on their eyes in the background is a soft blur of an autumn forest. So you can do soft blur if you don't want to kind of remember the specific terminology of shallow depth of field or deep depth of field. You can do soft blur and it achieves a similar result or if not the same result in this case. But yeah, it's good to remember the kind of technical terms because then you get the most accurate results. So in the background is a blur shallow deep of an item in background. So item or specific um, 
objects in the background like trees or plants or whatever it could be nature um, highlighting the subject with desired mood okay highlighting the subject of nfc there so that's that now we get into deep depth of field which is everything in focus evenly okay that's deep depth of field and this is the prompt for that a vibrant street scene capturing every detail from the bustling vendors in the foreground here to the historic buildings in the background there okay with everything in focus so a prompt formula for this is quite simple a scene description capturing every detail from things happening in the image with everything in focus so things happening in the image is of course foreground and background with everything in focus and also you want to use grammatically dash dash no blur this really ensures this really ensures that everything in your image is definitely in focus as you want it to be so deep depth of field ensures everything from near to far in the image is sharply in focus ideal for capturing detailed landscapes or cityscapes where clarity throughout is desired pardon right now we get into digital versus analog and the simple way to think of it is new versus old okay so digital is new and analog is old school so here it is then so digital photography tends to produce images with crisp details vibrant colors and a clean modern look is perfect for prompts that require clarity and precision. So this is a prompt then. So a portrait captured with a Sony FX3 using a Sigma F1.4 56 millimeter lens with an emphasis on crisp details and vibrant colors there. So the lower the f-stop, which is indicated by here, f1.4, the more light is let in into the lens. And the higher the millimeter range is the more zoom there is on the subject so right now this is a viltrox 13 millimeters prime lens so it's fixed at a certain um zoom zoom length which is uh, denoted by the millimeters that are visible so that is different to that okay so a 35 millimeter film is like has a little bit of a grainy texture to it but that's not necessarily the case when we look at just purely digital photography okay and if we head on over to film types on wikipedia you get a list here of all of these different photographic film types including the specific uh, brand mentioned there which was the kodak portrait should have so if you go down here to kodak you will see you've got the specific t max 400 for instance and you've got the ultramax 400 and all of these different brands here so there you go kodak portrait and it tells you under this description specifically what it's used for so professional fine grain film with natural colors for portraits fashion and commercial photography so that would be the use case there for that type of um, film type Slightly higher contrast than Portra 160, the Vision 3 technology, okay? You don't need to know that part, but you basically just look at this part and then decide whether you want to use it or not. So that's that. Okay, so that's the quick difference between digital versus analog. Now we go into the mid-journey settings that I've used. So what I used was this. So I've got raw mode on, stylized medium, um, turbo mod on turbo mode on because i want quicker results of course uh, low variation mode and then remix mode as well remix mode is very helpful to you know make sure that you can just add small uh, tweaks to your particular image just by pressing the refresh button uh, which is that little like circular kind of icon there so style raw this allows for as much of an authentic look as possible it near enough replicates real life so there's no need to put words like ultra realistic 4k or high definition throughout any of your prompts to achieve realism anymore you had to do that for version 5 and 5.1 i believe but that's no longer the case for version 6 and style medium this you can experiment with so the default value is medium also indicated as dash dash s100 so the higher the stylized value the more on the side of a mid journey type of aesthetic that will be produced and remix mode allows you to alter the prompt and therefore change your image after clicking and so some simple tips as i mentioned before when we were doing the deep depth of field example using dash dash no blur for even focus throughout the image is really really a good hack that i found and for more aesthetic results specifically for surreal style use a higher stylized value so something like uh, dash dash 200 500 etc that could be really good if you're going for that really fantastical type of feel there 
For less real and more artistic results, turn off raw mode. Again, great for surreal. And then this one is just like upload an image you like, then use slash describe to help recreate its artistic elements. So I did live stream of this award winning images uh, slash describe in mid journey v6. So you can of course go on to my live prompting playlist and watch that and you'll see that in action there using describe for specific types of images. So now we're going to get on to the 10 different types of portrait styles that I have. And for those of you tuning in now, I will be answering questions at the end. So feel free to leave them within the chat and I'll be doing that right now. So yeah, these are the 10 different styles then. So we're going to start off with classic portrait. So the key elements here are subject, age, facial expressions, camera angles, and eye direction. And as part of focal, we're using F and O. So for classic portraits, use frame composition and optimal lighting to highlight the subject's features with elegance and simplicity. Now that looks super clear to me. I don't know about you, but that looks like almost indistinguishable from reality. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It's really scary, right? Then we get environmental portraits. But before I get to that, let me finish reading out the prompt. So close up portrait photo of an elderly gentleman smiling warmly with eyes full of stories captured in frontal angle with soft natural lighting illuminating his features against the simple elegant backdrop. And then, yeah, that's that as a prompt. And this is environmental portraits. So the key elements here are setting and background, nationality and cultures, roles and professions. And as part of focal, we've used C and A. So focusing on camera angles and perspective for incorporating the surrounding context meaningfully and also using aesthetic styles to help blend the subject into their environment in a unique way. Now that looks super realistic in my opinion it really does it's captured you know the bokeh of the tree in the background but then that the foreground of the tree or the middle ground portion at least is a little bit in focus and then her eyes if you zoom in a little bit the pupil of it it's not quite circular but it's near enough like reality it's near enough good so yeah i'd give this like an eight out of ten uh eight maybe nine out of ten so it's, it's fairly good uh right okay so this is the prompt then a photo of a young asian woman in traditional attire standing serenely in a blooming cherry blossom garden at dusk her gaze is thoughtful and distant as the environment tells a story of cultural heritage and personal connection there and all of these have gone with two by three i just want them to be like a traditional portrait aspect ratio well whereas with the other ones i try to incorporate a little bit of the scene as part of the image and so i flipped it doing like a three by two aspect ratio but these should be all like two by three. So, yeah. So candid portrait then, key elements used here, are facial expressions, camera angles, eye direction, and makeup style. And as part of focal, we want to focus on L. So for candid portraits, use lens focus and depth of field to capture spontaneous moments with authenticity and to emphasize natural expressions and actions of the subject. So prompt here is a candid shot of a group of friends laughing together at a cozy urban cafe with natural sunlight casting playful shadows over their casual attire, capturing a moment of genuine joy and connection with the city's vibrant life as their backdrop. Now the city doesn't look that much vibrant to me, behind them but what's excellent about the image in question if i can zoom in properly maybe i can't is that the filament of the bulb is reflected within that um, window there which is really incredible and then also there's like a bloom as well which is like a, a photo photography technique where you basically get glow of the image so bloom a photography example terrible at typing right now it's good <laughs> yeah bloom is like this stuff so you get like a, a light and then you get this certain like uh light outside of the actual light itself light source so that's like bloom okay so it's done that in this image as well and i didn't even ask it to so like you get this uh the light reflected on the table and then it's like bloom that's being created around it so it's really good so this is lifestyle portrait now. So key elements are setting and background, roles and professions, accessories, and fashion look. And as part of focal, we've used F and L. So for lifestyle portraits, focus on aesthetic styles and frame composition to tell a story about the subject's personal life or interests. Um, 
yeah, A and F actually that was supposed to be. So I made a mistake. I'll correct that before I send it to you guys. Sorry about that. And prompt is an outdoor portrait of a stylish young entrepreneur on a warm summer night in Italy, dressed in smart casual clothing. His confident stance and engaging smile reflect a modern lifestyle with historical city streets providing a rich textured background. So it's done a really good job there. But if you zoom in a bit too much, it starts to become a little bit cartoonish. I have to say his face. But if we're looking at it from a natural, like a normal type of angle, I guess, normal zoom, then it looks super good. Especially the bokeh, the background blur there and where he is. And he's even got a cheeky Illuminati tattoo as well. <laughs> he's left four arm there. Um, but yeah, it, it looks really good. So that's that. This is Glamour Portrait. You can imagine this in like a Cosmopolitan or some like fashion magazine. It's really that good. It's my favorite image actually of the bunch of these portrait stars. So the key elements here are makeup style, makeup terms, jewelry, hair color, female hairstyles. So as part of Focal, we've used O and L. So for glamour portraits, you want to focus on optimal lighting and lens focus to highlight beauty and style. So the prompt is an elegant close-up portrait of a woman exuding a sense of classic Hollywood glamour. Her full lips are painted with bold red matte lipstick. So here with these like glamour type of portraits, you really want to kind of know a little bit about like makeup uh, accessories, right? Or, like makeup styles of like lipstick and like eyeshadow and all this stuff. You can just do a quick Google search and you you get a few different styles there. Um, so yeah, I, I looked that up briefly and then I was able to come up with this prompt. So yeah, it really helps create a unique aesthetic when you know what to look for. Her full lips are painted with bold red matte, lip, <laughs> red matte lipstick. Her eyelashes are thick with mascara and her cheeks are highlighted to perfection. The hair is styled in sleek vintage curls. All is set against the backdrop of soft, diffuse lighting to accentuate the luxurious feel of the scene. So if you zoom in there, it's really like magazine type of cover uh, material. It's really good, in my opinion. Right. Uh, now we move into surreal portrait. So key elements for this are makeup terms, lighting, color, accessories. And as part of focal, we're focused on the C and A. So for surreal portraits, use aesthetic styles and camera angles to transform ordinary scenes into dreamlike or fantastical images. And the prompt for this is a close-up surreal portrait capturing a person whose eyes reflect the universe, standing in an enchanted forest with trees of gleaming iridescent leaves under a swirling neon sky. They hold a glowing orb, blending the boundaries between the fantastical and the real. Their expression is filled with awe. Now, we can't see that his expression is filled with awe, but we can definitely see that it's blended reality with fantasy perfectly well, especially at the bottom. You know, it's got an elements of being like in, in, in a galaxy somewhere and then he's of course holding an orb which is fake and then the person's real so it's definitely done a good job there and all of the lighting as well is like artificial so yeah and of course you wouldn't find this type of lighting in nature so yeah really good job i'd say like eight to nine out of ten for that now we get into conceptual portrait so this is really interesting because it added another element to which I'll get to shortly. So the key elements for this are camera angles, eye direction, makeup style, setting and background. And as part of Focal, we've used F and A. So for conceptual portraits, focus on frame composition and aesthetic styles together to convey deep themes through carefully arranged visual elements. So the prompt is an artistic shot capturing a conceptual theme of time's passage, featuring a young woman with a thoughtful expression. She's surrounded by a flurry of floating antique clocks, each set to a different time against the backdrop of faded pages from old books, creating a narrative of the transient nature of moments and memories. And if we zoom in, we can see, you know, they're all set to different times and they look, definitely look old school. They look vintage. And then it's also used an effect called double exposure in photography, which is where you blend one type of image into another type of image. So you like blend two images, basically. So let me show you that double exposure so this is an example there of double exposure in effect you've got the mountains then you've got the lady there and with this guy you've got the beautiful like uh, scenic skyline and then you've got the guy of course so that's an example there that's a full-on image of double exposure across the whole you know frame so that's an example there of you know double exposure and it's done that there with the pages blending into her shoulder there so it's added that as an extra detail and I didn't even ask it to. So it's incredible. Um, yeah. Now we get into fine art portrait. Excuse me. 
So key elements for this are makeup style, female hairstyles, lighting and color. And as part of Focal, we've used O and A. So aesthetic styles and optimal lighting. So fine art portrait focus on aesthetic styles and optimal lighting to create images that evoke emotion or contemplation, often with a unique or artistic approach. So prompt is an ethereal fine art portrait of a woman wearing a long flowing gown in soft pastel color. Her hair is decorated with delicate flowers and she's posing against a painterly backdrop. Now painterly style is a unique type of style. Uh, it didn't do the job here very well, but it's kind of a messy type of style. That would be like a painterly type of style, right? And um, compared to like a linear style, which is more like done accurately, shall we say. So that would be more of a linear type of style and that would be more painterly. So it's a little bit more messy, but it didn't do the job perfectly there. But it definitely gave off that renaissance vibe, that's for sure. And the detail of her particular, you know, dress is really, really like high end. It's almost like as if it's a photograph that's been taken. But it's actually, you know, a painting, which is incredible. So that's that. Her eye as well, a little bit messed up, but I think they will iron this out in version seven. So yeah, a lot to look forward to with Mid Journey, that's for sure. So yep, yeah, that's the prompts there. Now getting into corporate portrait. So key elements for this are camera angles, eye direction, fashion look, and makeup style. And we want to focus on O and C as part of focal there. Um, or no, actually, camera angles and perspective. Sorry, did the same mistake there as well. So for corporate portraits, focus on camera angles and perspective and optimal lighting to ensure the subject is presented professionally, conveying confidence and competence. Prompt. So... A professional portrait of a confident business leader who's dressed in a sharp tailored suit and is looking directly at the camera with a commanding presence photographed in a modern office setting with a clean minimalist design the lighting is perfectly balanced to highlight their assertive posture and determined expression so i think out of all of the portrait images this is definitely the highest fidelity even if you zoom in quite a lot it doesn't look cartoonish at all it looks really real actually and he's got a little bit of a cheeky mullet as well <laughs> coming out on the side so it's really good it's really captured that well the seriousness of it all and now we get street portrait so key elements here are setting and background facial expressions fashion look and accessories as part of focal we're going to focus on lens focus and depth of field alongside frame composition to capture the dynamic and often unpredictable nature of street scenes prompt for this is a dynamic street portrait of a young artist in an urban setting captured in a moment of creativity as they paint a vibrant mural their casual eclectic style is reflective of the energy and diversity of the city around them the composition is filled with movement and color that showcases the raw and spontaneous spirit of street art so if we zoom in it's really good his hair especially it's gone up in so much detail actually from version 5 to version 6 the hair of subjects and the hands are not too bad. You know, the hands get a lot of complaints about uh, Mid Journey that it's not amazing. But I'd say it's, it's really good. It's really good in this particular image. And he's got, you know, a bit of blotches of paint on his denim jacket there. So it's picked that up really well, really well. And the, you know, the paintbrush on the particular wall as well is really accurate. So that's that there. So that's Street Portrait. And that's it. That's the end of the presentation. I have linked, you know, all of these um, particular resources in the guide for you to check out. And I've also included the cinematic playlist as well, in case you're curious to know about cinematic prompting as well. So there's also like if you've found this helpful, there's also an option to you know support me and donate if you want by buying me a coffee. Um, likewise, you can, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel where more of these types of videos will go up as well in the future so yeah i'm open to answering any questions that you guys have and thanks for tuning in and for those of you who have of course um, watched the video or have any questions you can ask them now but otherwise you know i can end the live stream here so yeah thanks clutch if you have any questions I'll be sending the uh, PDF to those of you on my email list. And if you haven't already, I can post it right now.
So that's the link. If you go to that link, you can, of course, sign up and get access to the guide as well. No problem, Bruce. I'm glad you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions around each of these styles that I've gone into. We've gone into quite a lot, 10 different portrait styles. And then before that, I was going through all of the technical aspects as well to consider. Now, I'm not an expert in photography as such, but I have been learning myself. And I thought that, you know, the reason behind this video is that to help solidify my own learning, I thought that, you know, I could teach you guys. So hopefully you found what I've gone through today quite valuable. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask your questions and I'll do my best to answer them here. No problem, J, 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 Og. By the way, I did post the link. So ai-evolve.com slash focal guide, F-O-C-A-L dash guide. And then you can be able to get this, get access to this PDF for free. So yeah. Any thoughts or suggestions on composition, i.e. foreground, midground, and background, and making sure different subjects placed where you want them? Yeah, it's good to actually get ideas, um, to get like ideas from like award-winning photos. So this was, I can't remember the name of the particular, yeah, it was this one. So worldphoto.org. So when you go here, you can get ideas for specific um, th things to do. Um, so if we go to like an image here, um, galleries, let's see galleries here. And we go here. We can see like for landscape shots, for instance, it's great to have like in the foreground something quite big and expansive. And then what I usually see is with the, the foreground, middle ground and background is if you have landscape shots that are tilted. So where you have something quite uh, at the top, I think I had a prompt example of this that I did. If I go, no, not here. Where was it? Yeah. So this is what I was doing like before. So if, if you have this, for instance, and you have slopes that you're utilizing, so you can see that it's like sloped uh, hills there. Okay. So that is like the foreground and then the middle ground there is like the lake going downwards. Right. And then that would be the background of where the rocket is taken off. So utilizing slopes on either side, as well as like hills can really like amplify, you know, the effectiveness of the foreground, middle ground and background, as opposed to just having something quite two dimensional where you've just got something there and it's even, and then you've got something in the background. So something in the foreground that's even, and then something in the background that's even as well. It doesn't have the same effect as if you have sloped hills like here. So hopefully that answers your question, Bruce. How many directions can mid journey take example subject style light in terms of prompt coherence Gaiba, it's uh, hopefully i'll pronounce that right it's like there's no end really there's no end from what i found the maximum that i have employed the use of is five to six directions within my prompts so five to six different instructions i've not gone beyond six as a maximum thing so uh, yeah as a rule of thumb i would say no more than six but of course you're free to experiment there's no written rules with mid journey as per se so many best practices so hopefully that's answered your question if i go to my like cinematic prompts you'll be able to see that i included quite a bit there
like here for instance there's quite a lot i know it's like a movie poster that i tried to do so a 2020 so like time period low angle and then medium shot of a crime movie poster with the words vengeance written in a bold white font centered at the bottom so even giving directions for how the text appears and stable diffusion 3 is supposed to be like the best in terms of handling text within an image so i have signed up for the waitlist of that you know, when I get access to that, I'll be going through that in a future live stream as well. So hopefully it will do a much better job with text there. Any thoughts or suggestions on composition for Grand Court? Yeah, I'll answer that question. How many? Thank you for your time and patience. No problem, Guybot. Been trying to create an image of a board room meeting with the main subject CEO behind the conference table and six board members sitting around a table in front of him. Keeps putting him, uh, keeps putting him in front. Of a boardroom meeting with the main subject CEO behind the conference table and six board members sitting around the table in front of him. Okay. And Bruce, have you used like uh, keywords like in the background? So I'd imagine this where you'd have to be very explicit with what you're talking about in terms of positioning here. So have you used things like, for instance, an ultra wide shot of a boardroom? Um, and then to the background behind the table is like uh, a man um, wearing a suit and then in front of him are three people either side or six board members sitting around the table. Have you used words that are like more camera angle focused as well as like specifying specifically, you know, foreground, middle ground and background? We can try that now, actually. So let's let's see if we can do that, Bruce. So ultra wide shot. Yeah, waiting is a very effective thing as well. So I usually do three, two, and one in the descending order when I use waiting. So an ultra wide shot. In front, what was that? Meeting with the main subject CEO behind the conference room. Meeting with the main subject CEO behind the conference room table. to in the foreground let's see where it comes back with i think what I, how I like to do prompting, how I like to approach it, is just in a very like layered way. So like start off very simple, get the simples down first, and then start to add layers of complexity over time. But yeah, waiting's a very good suggestion, Bruce. Let's Let's just see what comes back with this and let's do like a light, um, a wide aspect ratio, like 21 by nine cinematic. Also, where are you guys tuning in from? You know, are you from the US? I'm from the UK, of course, just outside London, but yeah, where are you guys tuning in from? Be good to know. So that's what it's come back with, Bruce. So I think that's fairly good, this second one there.
Los Angeles. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I've wanted to go Los Angeles. It's fairly good. I haven't got round to going there. And Belgrade, Serbia. Southern United States. That's good. Good stuff. So yeah, what 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 were you looking for again, bro? So a boardroom meeting with the main subject CEO behind the conference room table and six board members sitting around a table in front of him. Okay. So is this something like you wanted, Bruce? So you'd have like the CEO there and then people sitting around him on the table? No CEO or other board members, so I think I need to start stacking or add complexity on each year. Yeah, that's what I'd recommend, Bruce. Just like, take it a bit slow. Don't try and do everything all at once. Yeah. But yeah, three, two, and one in descending order when you're doing waiting is quite an effective solution from what I found. And then, yeah, you're just adding on one, literally one element at a time. That, that's how like much of a baby step you have to take when you're prompting. Because the prompt coherence is, prompt coherence basically means that it can listen to whatever we're writing in our prompts. So the prompt coherence is not absolutely perfect. So you have to do that baby step approach to get the exact result that you want. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you can like try to get an image as well from Google. So let's do like boardroom meeting. And you can try and take images like this, for instance, and uh, like save it or, you know, copy it or even drag it in. I think you can do that, maybe. No? Ah, yeah, whatever. But you can basically like take the image from a Google image and then use slash describe and then you're able to um, use some parts of that image or some parts of the prompts that are used to describe that image as part of your, you know, layering process to make it more complex and hopefully get it exactly how you want it to be. No problem, Bruce. Glad you found it good and helpful. Yeah, describe is a real, real hack. It really is. Um, yeah, if I go up. Yeah, all of these images that you're seeing were used from like describe. So for instance, if I go up right to the top. So this was like a an image that I found from that website here, um, worldphoto.org. And then uh, it came back with these particular prompts. And what's great about Describe as well is you get introduced to a different like photographic styles as well as different camera uh, types and um, different lenses as well. So you can come up with really tremendous results. So that basically using the Describe feature and that was the initial image turned into these four initially renditions. So rocket launches towards the moon in the style of Brian Hitch transport core dark sea and, and light black associated press photo mass masculism masculism i don't know how you pronounce that sketch fab michael weasley or wesley and that's what came back there so that's really really remarkable in my opinion and then yeah again same thing there and it comes back with basically four variations because i imagined them all at that time and then, yeah, came back with that image as well. So the initial image of that was this, okay? So this was quite bland looking, in my opinion. But, you know, after using the describe, I was really able to reimagine it in a very unique way. And these images have a great degree of depth to them, which otherwise wouldn't have been realized, especially this third one here, you know, the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. Really well. Good uh, illustration there. If I just upscale that, you'll be able to see that in action. So here's a great 
an illustration of foreground, middle ground and background as you were alluding to before, Bruce. So that was just by using the particular describe feature in Midjourney, as well as that site worldphoto.org to get some inspiration. So hopefully that helps. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate it. Thanks, Guybor, for helping out. Guybor or Dryber, please, please correct me if I'm wrong in pronouncing your name. But yeah, thanks for helping out. Regardless. What else have you guys been struggling on in mid journey? Maybe I can help. I'm not an expert by any means, but you know, if I can help, then you'll be good. No problem, so glad you're finding it helpful and welcome. <laughs> yeah. Definitely looks like it, right? Yeah, this, this was just uh, from worldphoto.org and then uh, all of these beautiful images were created as a result. So this is from another live stream I did where I was just using the describe feature only. Um, and there was also this as well. So this image here, really beautiful image. Nice little moon there. And then in the middle ground, we've got these mountains. In the foreground, we've got this really like thick lake or river. Yeah, river. And then sloped mountains either side. So that's that. And then it came back with these four different variations of prompts. And uh, yeah, really, really incredible, I have to say. Really incredible. Some of them were a little fantastical, but then others were quite real looking as well so yeah let me know what you guys think on that of that rather And then earlier on, I did something, you know, that was a gas station as well. It was part of that live stream and it was really unique. So this was the image for that, if I go up. Really incredible, you know, a great color grade. Color grading is basically the certain color tone of the image. So it's really, really beautiful. And then, yeah, came back with those four prompts and we were able to reimagine it to be like this. So yeah, really amazing. That was one of the prompts second and third and then fourth here so, yeah so some of them are you know real looking but others are not not that real looking so yeah you get a, mi a mixed bag back and that's what's great about describe And then this is an example here as well of, you know, as part of my presentation when I went into digital photography, this is like using a newer camera there. So Sony FX3 is a cinema line camera and I utilize shallow depth of field. So we see everything behind the subject is blurred 
and then there are of course a flock of birds there and the subject is in focus but then the birds in front of him there they're also very blurred so yeah it's very crisp and it's got great um themes as well blue and green so blue and green tint that is added to it so that's like a color grade there so this was the prompt 2020s crime movie poster of a man wearing a black and white suit in a new in new york city surrounded by a flock of birds shot with the sony fx3 shallow depth of field includes themes of blue and green throughout for the color palette okay so that was that And then, yeah, this was part of my other guide that I had. So this was part of the, uh, I believe the frame guide. Yeah, frame guide. So you can get that. You just go to, I'll just post the link now. So the link I'm posting now in the chat, that was a guide for cinematic prompting. And as part of that, we had like uh, different movie posters as well. Uh, so that's that. No problem, Bruce. I'm glad you you found it helpful. But yeah, I see I see that the chat's died down a bit, so I think I'm going to call it a day there. But yeah, thank you to all of those that tuned in, and I'm glad you know you found some value from this stream. So let me know as well, now, after the fact the stream's ended, feel free to comment on what you'd like to see next. But otherwise, that's everything. I've been Vey, and thank you for watching AI Vault. Till next time, peace. <laughs>